Luigi Cadona, the Iron Dictator of the Italian Army, an old Roman, a man cast in a big simple mould of antiquity. Alberto Polio, Chief of Staff, dies suddenly and unexpectedly. A new Chief of Staff is needed and he is appointed and he would lead the Italian army for more than three years in the Great War and obviously by the title his name is Luigi Codorna. Luigi himself in the early years was born in 1850 in the city of Palazzi and his father Raphael Codorna was a soldier that fought in the Crimean Wars but would later become a general and he was involved in the final acts of reunification of Italy. Luigi himself did go to military school and was then finally commissioned as a artillery lieutenant and even participated in the reunification of Italy led by his father of course. And his father actually played such a big role in his life. It was so much so that he actually wrote a biography about his father in the post-war years. He met Belle, Babel, and married, and they had three children, two daughters and a son, which he would of course name after his father, Raphael Cadorna Jr. He rose through the ranks quickly though, and he became a major, and he became a chief of staff, then only divisional command in the 19 in the 1890s, and he was colonel that commanded Versilles, Versilles, and in 18 in 1898 he finally was promoted to lieutenant general, and had various senior staff and divisional command positions. But Cadorna never fought on the front line until the First World War. He didn't take part in the Italo-Turkish War, which gave Italy Libya and... No, no, not Somaliland. So, 1914 drew near and Luigi, at this point, had a noteworthy career and is about to enter retirement when suddenly the position of Chief of Staff is given to him and he accepts, but he accepts on the conditions that the king formally controls he, the king would formally control the army but he Luigi wanted full control of the Italian armed forces now it's true that Cadorna is a man of very harsh punishments and strict discipline so much so there might be a horrors of war dedicated to these punishments and uh, strict obedience maybe maybe not maybe the Italians did worse on the front line we shall see he was a man that was so confident in his own abilities and was very or 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 an Otarian and he was very Catholic as well and so was his family so much so that later on in the post-war years his daughters would become nuns and at this point Italy was still linked with the central powers when the war broke out Cadorna himself was already making plans for the Italians to help the Austrians and the Germans but he was pretty much in the dark on what Italy would be doing in the war and when Italy declared strict arm neutrality it shocked him it shocked him when Italy at this point he had more to worry about than the arm neutrality the lack of men and artillery well the modern artillery was severely lacking and he had established headquarters in Udina oh well I lost it uh, Udina in the Archbishop's palace well Cadorna wasn't the most popular figure he was never the most popular figure in the military and politics and was kind of a cult figure he would rule the army with an iron fist and nicknamed the Generalissimo and was so strict he would fire from his command for the slightest pretext during the whole entire war well his reign because he was yet yeah, during his reign he would fire more than 217 generals 255 colonels 
and 337 general lieutenants. He published a bulletin in 1915 outlining his military theory and for Cardona the most important thing above all else was morale. He, he stated victory is determined by the demoralization of the enemy and it would go on to be his philosophy but also his main drawback in military theory. He did not understand that modern war was shaped by material. He only looked for it. He only he he he, he noticed it, but he only made it a side note. Morale was his main goal. He soon realized war won't be a short one, and he had very few alternatives. But then he focused his attention on the Asanzo River, a battle for another day, but. We start out in 1915, a few weeks after Italy has joined the war, but the Italian gains were very minimal, but losses were heavy and huge for the Italians, but it still lacked men and modern artillery, which proved deadly and disastrous for the Italian army. The, the Italians had lost double of what the Austrian-Hungarians lost in manpower, and the Minister of War pleaded his case in 1916 and wanted to form a council of war. It was suggested so that it would be made up of ministers and generals to directly challenge Cadorna in military operations. But Cadorna had one ace up his sleeve. Remember that promise? The king. And it was automatically rejected. And out of this whole debacle, only one person resigned, and that was the Minister of War himself. He later wrote to his wife that the principal, that the principal enemies were no longer the Austrians, Hungarians. He opposed sending Italians to any other front, such as Libya, even Albania, but only sent some to the Mac Macedonian. He only sent some to the Macedonian front because all the allies were there and the absence of Italian forces might mean the loss of future consensations. Consensations. All the way up to mid-1916 had been of defence but that all changed when the Austro-Hungarians attacked. He learned they even stated their attack so much so, the Austrian Hungarians stated their attack so much so, even newspapers had known about it and published them, but Luigi thought it was just a hoax and propaganda. He was shocked when they attacked, when they said they would attack, and it proved a lesson. And after that attack, he buffed up the army in terms of manpower, gave them new artillery and even some machine guns. But even then, he still believed in the moral preparation. It was the key factor for him. But due to the well-planned attacks and good artillery work, they captured Gorizia, but they failed to throw up the victory properly, thus causing lives up to 50,000 Italian casualties. In fact, by 19... The Italian army was on the verge of mutiny and desertion and it would be the worst year of the war for the Italians in terms of war dead. And Cadorna believed the cost of propaganda was not to blame for his own abilities and skills but found it fault within his own troops and it was the Iron Fist discipline and punishment and, terror and he terrorised the troops. They were molded by punishment instead of knowing why or what they were fighting for. They did, however, push the Austrians back 12 miles across Storm trooper tactics. And it broke the Italian lines and forced all the way back to the Piave River. But yet again, Cadorna blamed the loss of the battle because of his troops. In, in his troops and the lack of morale and not the German skill and tactics. And... He tried to reinsert patriotism back into the demoralized troops, but his reign swiftly came to an end, and it had come to the end after Caporetto. Armando Diaz is the new chief of staff in November 1917, but Cadorna was still assigned the Italian representative 
at the Allied War Council in Versailles, but he would soon resign altogether and retire in Vienna to finish his book on his father. He saw a sneak peek of the rise of fascists and saw it in a positive light, but then said, Mussolini reign won't last because the Italians don't want a dictatorship. He moved to the newly owned Terrest in 1926 and then died in 1928. His reputation certainly wasn't a good one because he always believed the soldier's morale was more important than his gun. He was really an old man, I guess, in the modern world.